Hi, in this lecture we're going to talk about symmetric and diagonal matrices, so it should be a pretty easy one. Um, the reason why I look so disheveled is because it's 43 degrees outside, and as a Canadian I'm handling that about as well as you'd assume. Uh, but let's just get into it. So let's talk about symmetric matrices first. Oh, and one more thing, this goes with chapter 2.6 of the deep learning textbook that this course accompanies. Um, but I'm splitting it into two lectures, so the next one I'll be talking about more on 2.6, which is more I'm talking about orthogonality and other different concepts. Okay, so symmetric matrices is an easy one to talk about. Well, they're both pretty easy to talk about. But a symmetric matrices is basically if some A is symmetric, then A transpose is equal to A. So when you flip it, it equals the same thing. Well, let's look at an example, say 1, 3, 5, 2, 2, 7, 7, 6, 6. There we go, there's a nice symmetric matrix. And then let's transpose this just to double check. So this becomes the first row, so then our first row becomes 1, 2, 7. 2, 3, 6 becomes our second row, 2, 3, 6. And this becomes our third row, 7, 6, 5. And you can see those are exactly the same. The reason why and the way you can kind of identify symmetric matrices just by looking at the matrix A is by kind of, if you put a main diagonal across this matrix from left to right up to down, then you can see that the elements are mirrored across this diagonal. So this one is the same as this, and this is the same as this, and then this is the same as this. So you can see that they're mirrored across the diagonal, and the ones across the diagonal, they don't need to be in any specific pattern, because of course these just kind of stay stationary when you transpose the matrix. So as long as these uh, things across the diagonal are symmetric, then you have a symmetric matrix that is the same thing when you transpose it. So that's really what you're looking for, is this mirroring across the diagonal of terms. Alright, so that basically covers symmetric matrices. Now we want to talk about diagonal matrices. And uh, one more thing about symmetric matrices and kind of why we talk about them a lot is because, um, you know, having the property that A transpose A equals A is quite, you know, it simplifies a lot of matrix equations and that sort of thing. But as we'll see later on, uh, a matrix being symmetric is often, uh, often allows it to have a lot of other very uh, helpful properties that make a lot of other things simpler, so they'll come up a lot. And often when we're making a matrix for some equation or some operation, we try to make them symmetric because that makes things a lot easier. Okay, so diagonal matrices is the second thing to talk about. So we've already seen one diagonal matrix, and that's the identity matrix. Right, so, that's, so the identity matrix has ones across the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And basically, generally, a diagonal matrix is any matrix where you have any numbers on the a diagonal, and then zeros absolutely everywhere else, no exceptions. So it's a pretty easy way to remember it, basically across the diagonal. Uh, this is kind of a very inefficient way to portray a diagonal matrix because you're writing so many zeros. So often we just cheat and either we uh, write, and you'll see me do this a lot, uh, you just write two big zeros on the end here, um, and then in text often we say uh, to represent a diagonal matrix, for example, this one, we first make a vector, which basically has all the diagonal elements in it. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 5, 4, 3, 2. So we define a vector first, and then we call this diagonal um, diag v. And that basically just is the same thing as these two uh, are identical. All right, so you'll see that a lot in text. Uh, one thing that's very important to kind of mention about diagonal matrices is when you multiply them, uh, it's a lot easier than normal matrix multiplication. So say if we want to multiply this by a vector first. So let's multiply this by a vector. So let's say A, B, C, D. And you remember how we multiply matrices and vectors, hopefully. So we're just going to do dot product between the rows and the columns. So our resulting is, thing is going to be another vector. So what's do with this with this? So you can see that 5 multiplies the a, and then the zeros multiply with everything else and cancel everything out. So we just get 5a here. Then we multiply this by this, and the zeros cancel everything out, so you just get 4b. Here, same thing, we just get 3c. Here, the same thing, we just get 2d. So you can see that this is basically equivalent to just taking the element-wise product of just multiplying each element here by its corresponding number. So it's very easy to just do in your head. Um, if we define this vector again, v equals, say, 5, 4, 3, 2, uh, you can imagine it's basically just taking the element-wise product between this vector v and this vector here. So that's a symbol for a vector uh, element-wise product. And we say a, b, c, d, 
and we just multiply this by this and you get 5a, this by this 4b, and it's basically identical in that sense. So multiplying a vector by a diagonal matrix is really easy and really nice. And then the last thing is multiplying a uh, diagonal matrix by a uh, another matrix, a normal matrix, and we see that that's almost equally as nice. So say we get some diagonal matrix, I'm not sure, 5, 4, 3, and then zeros everywhere else. And then we multiply this by some generic A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and that's our, um, that's our matrix there. So if we multiply these, we'll see that we, okay, you know what, I'm not going to be lazy, that's just going to make things more confusing. Something like this, so we multiply this by our first uh, column there, and we just get 5a, we multiply this by our second, we just get 5b, here by our third, we just get 5c, we do the second one of this, we just get 4d, and you kind of see a pattern here. So basically we just multiply each row by its cor a corresponding coefficient here in the diagonal matrix, so everything here gets multiplied by 5, everything here gets multiplied by 4, everything here gets multiplied by 3, so we end up having 4e, 4f, and then we just get 3g, uh, 3 a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, H, I, A, B, C. All right, great. Uh, just make sure I got my alphabet right. Anyways, all right, that's good. So that covers everything. So that basically covers, I think, one more thing with diagonal matrices that's really important and easy and nice is that when we take the inverse of a diagonal matrix, we just take the reciprocals of all the numbers across the diagonal. So say we have some diagonal matrix A, B, C, and then zeros everywhere else, uh, 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 zeros everywhere else, right, if we have zeros everywhere else, we just take the inverse by taking the reciprocals of the things across the diagonal, so 1 over A, 1 over B, 1 over C, and then zeros everywhere else, and that's just kind of the general easy way to find the inverses of a diagonal matrix, and usually it's very hard to find inverses in matrices, so it's nice when it's nice like that. Anyways, that's about covers it. That's everything in, uh, in, in um, <laughs> symmetric and diagonal matrices. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.